What do you uh, what do you see here? Just briefly, because it probably makes sense to look what you before I talk about how that how that makes sense in the graphic completely. Uh, it's a, it gives you a table. It's an introspection format and debugging an API analysis format for types in the C program. Um, GCC emits it. We manage GCDF. Um, LD, LD duplicates it, and um, then you've got that, and then there's something called all the duplication removed. It's much smaller even before it's deduplicated, but after it's deduplicated, it really does get small. Uh, the BFD has 50k of CPF in it. The entire Linux kernel has 16 men of CPF in it. This is a giant enterprise kernel. God knows how much it is, 3,000 module. Um, the, there is a library of CPF that gives you read and write access. Uh, the linker and the duplicator is also in there, and you can see that it uses a public API to do all the reading and writing, uh, so you can be reasonably sure that it's complete. If it wasn't complete, you can link it. Um, the, it comes in individual, well, they're originally called files, but they're not in files, they're in sections, so they're called dictionaries because they contain type in it. BTA could do most of this as well, but what BTA can't do is map from elf synthesis types. Even if the types are ambiguously defined, we don't need programs to conform to the one definition rule. Uh, we can handle the ghost script uh, with millions of structures with the same name in different source files. Um, I'll go into more about, more about that later. Uh, currently, the latest version is CTFB3, which is, despite the name, not compatible with the CTF in Solaris or the CTF in, in Windows and all the rest of them in FreeBSD, because I remembered it from 2 to 1 and threw all the compatibility code away back uh, when I started, which is probably a mistake. <laughs> There is a spec. It, um, I will change. I will update the spec um, as as things as things go on. It's pretty stable by now. The BTF is also pretty stable. No, not as cool as the We're generating CTF for the kernel in Oracle Linux. And we're also generating BTF for the kernel in Oracle Linux. And at least one tool needs both of them. Uh, this seems less of an ideal. I think it would make more sense to just have one format and um, and and do both things from this one almost identical format. But we can't just do the CTF because CTF can do a bit more elf symbols, that sort of thing. So we're, uh, so we're, so we're basically CTF in four on BTF with a few extra things on the top. And you, at the time, you'll be able to say, I don't want to omit those few extra things, um, just using BTF, if, uh, even if this loses information. Um, oh, good. So the, uh, the one thing we can do which I don't think there is a great deal, a, a great deal of um, effort in BTF to do because Prapol gets it, just does, does what we used to do in 2018 and before. And if it finds two types the same, then this is almost assume one of them is the, is the right type and hook everything up to it. Can't take this off to the verifier, it's always seems somewhat worrisome to me. CTF does a full hash uh, uh, hashing scan over, over every input, uh, input translation unit, it finds types which have the same name. As another type of other translation unit, but are not the same, or depend on other types that are not the same, shuttles them, sh shuttles them off into, well, it kind of, I think, as you know about split BTF, where you can have BTF dictionaries that depend on other BTF dictionaries. CTF has something similar, it calls them parents and children. Uh, ch types, that are, types that are conflicting but not used much, uh, not to refer to by other types much, get moved to the children, and everything it refers to them also ends up in the child. Uh, we break cycles at every possible po possible place, so we don't need to worry about cycle protection and that sort of thing. We then smush these into one immutable archive, so you can easily access them, and then they, they can be put in a single section. The archive format is not only people that probably change it. It's possible that the kernel people won't want an archive at all. Look at small separate files. We can handle all of that. Um, so the kernel things are a little bit different, uh, but for the user space. We, after the duplication, everything ends up in one gigantic shared dictionary at the top, which you could conceptually imagine to be as if you were a C program, and you've actually included every single file in the, in, in the program, what types do you get? You get the types in that dictionary, except for the ones that conflict and they go into the children. The kernel is doing a bit differently because it's got some very big modules, Hello AMD GPU, Hello Nuvo, and a lot of people don't need to use them. So instead, we say that all types that aren't you are used by more than one module and are the same, end up in a shared parent, and everything else ends up in the children. This means you end up with a pretty big dictionary for just the core kernel for types that aren't in any modules. 
and you end up with a giant N in GPU and a few other fairly big ones like XFS, and most of the rest end up in the, ends up in the parent. This is not quite the same as what we've what done with BDF, so we may need to adjust this. Anyway, onto the, uh, onto the, actual, for the, the actual differences between um, CD, uh, CDF and BDF. M most of the differences can just be ignored. We can paper over them automatically. Um, we dip, um, the general goal is to end up with a system which can open any previous version of CDF or BDF and treat them all the same way and access them with the same APIs and leave them all together and duplicate them together. Um, the, the, uh, there are a couple of, <laughs> I'm going to call them invisible differences. Which is different because you can't tell there from the format because it's to do with the way things are distributed in the th uh, um, between parents and children, or between, for BDF's case, between split BDF and VM Linux. Um, for CDF, we had, a, we had a scheme where whenever you put a type in a child, you flip on its tiny. Um, BDF just says, well, you fill out the parent and then you fill out all the, and all the split BDF starting from the last type in the parent. It's a very different type now. Adapting that was, was quite painful, but I've already written the code and it works. Uh, Streams, there's something very similar. BDF definitely does something better here. CPF said if you're in a child, you've got a string that hasn't been used before, it goes into a child string table, which means that you often end up with the same string in lots of different child, child string tables, which is a nasty duplication. BTF just says if strings are duplicated, they go into the parent, even if they're not referred to many times in the parent. Um, this works much better, and I've now adjusted the CDF so it uses, does that, and it saves several megabytes in the kernel CDF. I think it dropped from 18 to 15, which is not bad for one format, for one format change. Um, that, yeah, absolutely. Um, the type ID change is pretty harmless. The format is a little bit more fragile in the, C, in the CDF world because all the types in the children have ID, are, are, you know, they start with about 8 and so on. You can add types to the parent and you can add a bunch more types to the child, and then you can add more types to the parent and they never come alive. That's not true in, 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 um, in BDF and it won't be true in CDF before. You have to fill out the parent and, uh, and the child, and once you've written them out, you can never add types to the parent again. Even after you open it, you can't add types, you can't add strings, they're frozen because they'd overlap types in the, in the children. But people don't really add types to archives after they've looked at the, the kernel type system after the kernel's been deduplicated. So I don't think this is actually going to cause a problem. But there are a couple of programs that do try to add types to dictionaries after they've been opened, but we'll have to fix them. The yes, please, if you have the other things, this. No, this is it's it's just what the, the, the approach I searched for. Um, this approach, the BTF in this the invisible format in this year is between CTF and Yeah, and I uh, just like crazy CTF to do exactly what we did. Yeah, but this the type ID in children runs can you go back one slide? Yeah, the type IDs in children run continuously from the parents. Is this still true? Considering the split BTF that they okay. Okay, so this is this is what they so this is the split BTF that they developed recently. Okay. So the next invisible format difference, and I can find I can find good for this one. Um, is, uh, uh, is the is the um, is the is the BDF header itself? Um, CDF has more headers, has more you know, both both BDF and CDF have their own section internally. Um, the not a very easy there's a script lab section and there's a section with all the types in it. Um, but BDF has a bunch more. But so BDF has a bunch more. It has several sections which are only used to say we can use the space. We have an else executable. Uh, we have a symbol ID. Um, the thing that you get is what type of it. Um, and we could, we could handle this even if, for example, some of the types are, in uh, are conflicting types and they're in child dictionaries. So they're really, really sparse and spacey. There might be only two or three types of that dictionary which have uh, uh, symbols associated with them. Uh, but, in, but in the period, if, um, uh, um, if, if virtually every symbol has a type, you didn't actually spend any space on the symbol, I think. You just run it and use it for your own. This takes several sections. And um, we'd love to be able to sort of fit the section in multiple having the EPDF compatible. Uh, the saving grace here, I'm not sure if I went through the slide for this one. Oh, uh, yes. The saving grace here is that the, um, 
it's, it's, hey, what is all the hey, you the hey, value of object in the ignorance, see if you can see that. Um, we get that, we get that, unlike old CPF, we get that lists the header link in the header, and it checks the header link from the um, elements, which means you can just stuff extra headers on the end of the, on the end of the VTF standard set, and all the VTF tools will still keep working. The only thing you refuse to do is open foreign ends and one and take them and any of them, but the sky, they don't get in the format and get extra headers and they don't, they don't understand. And so, when you ask if you need to do an HCPF rather than DTF, it just makes a bigger header, changing the header, and all the tools of DTF tools should still keep working perfectly well. But all those, uh, that there is a single carrier, which is that the CPF will have, has, will have a few extra pipelines in its new cases. And at the moment, if you have pipelines you don't have sand, nothing can destroy a different type thing, because you don't know how big the pipes are, how big the description of the pipes are. Um, and the wire has a scene for fitting this, which is probably what I do with the VTF called the layout section, which basically says for any given kind of type, here's how you look at the, at the stuff in the uh, 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 the stuff in that type to figure out how big it is so you can see it. So at least for a tool, we want to see it perfectly and understand how we can bring part of the whole thing. Um, if you get, get this, we will add it as well. Um, but uh, and, uh, if we can do as in more for your we bump the CDF for format version and with that. This does require us to be able to tell what version we get really, and that's the problem. Because when we get changes, you know, they, they never see the bump the format version. You can't tell whether you're reading something from five kernel version ago or something from now. It seems to be the will have to fix this and start bumping the format version properly if they start to reach up in user space because you can't rely on people rebuilding all the user space every time they change the kernel. They change the kernel. Yeah. What is the idea of the NSO making the Sorry, I asked that what it, the NDM swapping, why it doesn't work? I think PGF have the same have the same attitude to NDMs, which is we always write out everything in native NDMs. There's a bit of a problem there with, on, with CTF, the archive format is currently always little Indian. and I've fixed this to Indian swap in the same way, so we're consistent. Um, the, the problem is that in order to swap everything, you know, into the native Indian this at open time, you have to be able to understand the format in every section, because you can't Indian swap a, a given type unless you know how big it is. Which means that the VTF tools, they can swap the flash sections because they don't know how big they are. Uh, yeah. But you can't possibly, you can't possibly know how to swap the flash Maybe we can maybe we can establish that anything that gets added is a, is a 32 bits integral. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then never mind. It's possible that layouts at the end if you have anything. Um, it's possible the layout of might be able to describe the layout sections enough that you could bite swap them. But I don't think this is the point, because you can't do anything with those sections because you don't understand them. Because by definition, you only understand the things in the headings. No, it will be further than the structure here, not of sections. Oh, well, the problem is that <laughs> sections might be bite swapping. Uh, I think what in practice we can say at the moment, BTF just refuses to open things if, if they need bite swapping in the section of the wrong range. We could ask to change that. So that they're happy to open them, but they just ignore all the other things they really don't understand anyway. Yeah. And they still bite swap these. Uh, I think right now it's just a paranoia. Oh, maybe this is a later version of BTF and can't bite swap things. The solution to that is not to, not to refi refuse to bite swap, but to update the format version so you know what version of BTF we're using. But that's something to talk about in LPC and Vision. Yeah, but only one more thing. When it comes to the rest of the CTF header, you have control in the sense that if you just add and sign 32 bit 32 bytes, then the the BPF the BPF reader could be adapted to say okay. But it doesn't do the direction session on this, and so it can't like what the problem is. And even if you could, it doesn't know what section the table has. No, no, but for for the header, the BTF reader could be told okay anything from. Yeah. Header len to the okay everything after a string len at the left up to header len byte swap in thirty two bits in thirty two in thirty two bits 
if you implement this law, just law in the street doors that are not going. And then all the bikes are going to be on the Ah, well, but it's going to ignore it in, in any way. Okay, then what? Uh, yeah, okay. Then why is a problem the Indian swap? Okay, so. So it probably shouldn't fail. I suspect the fate will simply because it assumes the information is different. This is a new version of BDF and we shouldn't keep going with it. You've got a version. Why not read it? <laughs> um, there are some pity format differences, um, some of which are quite disrupted. Um, because they were the expanded from the time of Solaris era, the various lengths of the format support are different. Um, the V letter, which is the very late section art written in type entry in the, in the type thing, has a different maximum size, which affects the number of structural fields in the code. Well, I think it's pretty reasonable to be able to say we can't have all the supply quite through, so it's structured with a bit of a in a parallel structure. But there are things in the space with walls, and we've got to use two that were before us. Maps, flat sided. Is it likely that you find more than two gigabyte type in the code? Well, I do think so, but they really are like a multiple in the user space. Uh, and there's a hidden bit in the kit for in it associated with every type in the CDF, which simply says if this is turned on, even if it's a say an int or something with an actual name, you can't look it up by name. Um, which means you can add something else with the same name, you can look up by name. And under some circumstances the GPK uses it. And so we'd like to keep it somehow without forcing BTF to change. And we can we can change all of this without breaking BTF. Um, we can compensate all for all of these problems. We do not need to change the BTF type T and completely break parsing of, 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 of all types of BTF. Um, we introduced a couple of these type kinds, there are lots. Um, um, that's another good bit that PCP around 64, but since there are so few, I don't think we care. Um, the, the, uh, the new kind of type is a bit uh, 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 of these the prefix type, um, which is something that's never really got heard of from the domain. Uh, a prefix type is a type with another type stuck on top of it. You simply say uh, 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 that um, in, order, in, order to find the, in order to find the size of a, of a, of a, of a structure which is, a, uh, which, is a, which is a big structure, you multiply together. The, it's got, because it's a type with another type stuck on top, it's got two sides in the two units. And you multiply them both together to get the size of the resulting type, and the amount of the variable in the data arc at the end. And now you've got a massive amount, uh, uh, um, you've got even more, even bigger types than you can in CDF, all of them completely compatible. Um, the layout section would have to say um, how to figure out how big a BTF kind, signal kind of big it is. But if it did this, uh, we could even write this out as BTF, we wouldn't even need to say it was CTF, but it would still be plausible by all BTF tools, they just stick these types. Um, and that, with that in place, we can convert all CTF V3 types to all, all, all CTF V3 dictionaries into CTF V4 and maybe BTF dictionaries with no compatibility loss with nothing we can't, we can't read. There's also a CTF kind of hidden prefix which has no data read at all and just says the type jammed after this one is hidden. Now we didn't need a hidden prefix, the type like that. Um, which is a bit that BTF doesn't have. Some of us in the that. Much, uh, much smaller additions. Um, we, uh, um, we implement this, stri this strange thing called slices in CDF V3, which says, we, if you've got an int, you can slice it and make it smaller. Now you have a big field. Um, you, we, we could just convert those into, um, into BDF through my big fields, because in practice, you'd never see them except as children of structure members, because you can't make big fields anywhere else in C. Or we might not. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which makes more sense. Uh, we would certainly need to convert them if, we would, if the user said, write out the PTF and we've read it in CTF. Um, Where do you make those? Can we more Off the slices. Which uses slices, so it's still not somehow. Well, yeah, I, I mean for, for the new generation. What uh, are Oh, okay. So. Uh, however, the one thing they can represent, which they cannot, is that we can represent. There are things old. You can have structure members which are to, uh, uh, which, which are type defs, or which are type defs of things, which are to, which are bit fields and that sort of thing. I think in that case, it's still a structure member of the bit field, so BTF is still encoding fun. In which case, we can still draw it slightly. The only other thing you don't have in the CDF needs to keep, which BDF doesn't have, is that it's sort of a strange extra thing on the string table. Normally, string tables are just an offset into a table that you run from the beginning to the end. 
Uh, we split the EF and the EF before, right at the beginning of the end, then you run from the beginning of the child to the end of the child. But CTFB3 has an extra feature where if you flip the high bit on, it gets the content from a completely different string table, the external string table, which the standard does not define, but always is actually the LF dynamic string, which is a string table. Uh, this is particularly useful because this means you never need to record the names of symbols. You always just refer to them directly out of the ELF symbol table, and it takes no space at all. Uh, this matters because one of the representations for um, the types of symbols is a pair of name to, of name to type IDs. So you can sort, um, and in that case, we don't want to have to store the name over and over again. It's stored in the other symbol table already. Carrying this over should be easy. It happens only that we do not carry it over in BTF, we only carry it over in CTF before. It's the kind of thing they might want to include in the um, BTF user space stuff. Or they might not. We could propose all these things for BGF in future. Um, BGF improves over CTF as well. Um, it's got bigger emails, it's got data sections, which are a pile of, um, of variable references next to each other. It's got a, bit of a different representation for variables, which are many different type mappings used for non symbol table things like the kernel, and a different representation for forwards, which works, so we can switch them with no trouble at all. I don't understand yet quite how the sections work. In particular, if anyone knows if you can have a variable, whether a variable can appear in more than one data section, or if it's required to appear in exactly one, or if they can appear in none at all, I'd be glad to happy to know because it affects the API. I didn't. I don't understand what the rules are. Only one as far as I know. Exactly one or one of Can you learn variables that aren't in sections at all? So one object that spans for to variable. more than one section. Uh, one, one variable. Can it appear in more than the data set entry for a variable? You you can only have one because the variable appears in only one section. Yeah. yeah. But by, by variable in BTF, they mean objects, basically. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't think they can, an object can span through more than one yeah. data section. Yes, but of course the problem is if you look at KO, if you look at KO things, names can appear in it repeatedly at different addresses, and which seems to me likely to be represented in having multiple. So a, name. a name, yeah, which yeah. is a very BDF. You have in the data section, you have a pointer. You have the ID. You have the ID of a variable entry yeah. in the variable section. Yeah. With, but that's not a name. You can have two different variable entries with the same name. Oh, in BTF, in BTF, yeah, you have a variable entry and entry. So the data sec associates a variable with a section, yeah. with an offset into a section. So it refers to the section by name. That's true. To the section, it refers by name. To the variable, it refers by uh, the ID of the variable entry, so the type ID of the variable entry in the variable section. And the variables themselves, they are named by a, an index in the string table, but they can have the same name, yeah. Uh, but, but I, I'm just wondering if you found out variables can appear repeatedly in the different addresses. I'm just wondering if that was being handled by having multiple, multiple sections with the same variable. But maybe, maybe they don't want to handle it. Well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I didn't ignore the last one. I'm definitely typed out the knot problem, so I'm not going to have a slight look at that. I'm not going to have a problem with it. I'm not going to have a problem with it. Data sections and variables are coded to their types, even though they're not. This is different from CDF. You don't think it's trivial to deal with. The only interesting part is that in CDF, we source in the variable section, so you can do search. And there is no required order of the variables in BGF, so I'm going to sort them over in time. So we can still be accepted. Uh, and we're not still here from the teams, because they don't change what they are. Um, how does this affect the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the CGF API? It hardly does. Um, there's a, uh, there's a uh, bunch of flags you can pass in that say, I want BTF, no matter what, if you need to remit CDF, just foul, which would basically, you've got a massive title in front of the kernel. 
Um, you can also say, oh, it's an incendiary, you should think it seems to be to uh, help people more appropriate with all your parts of this, because you don't want to lose information to it with all the steps in, that sort of thing. Or just, no, if you don't part, if you don't part anything, you can pull an CTF or um, if, it, if it has to, PTA, otherwise. Um, you get in your fu we add new functions to look out data sections, type in nickel tags, that sort of thing. It's no trouble, it's no trouble at all. We've already added things like this for other purposes before. Enums are really interesting, um, probably because the API treats all enums as enumerants, values, and items. They're not in We may we may need to bump the API so they to this or just add more functions. Use D64 D. I haven't figured out which would be more annoying. <laughs> Why does it matter to bump the so name at all? Because it's it. No, I think you're right, but because of what because of where libctf resides, it doesn't really matter because we outside outside of Oh right, okay, and then and they have to adapt their code anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay. Valid call before is still valid after. Yeah. The size is bigger. But it's only got to change nonetheless. So I'll, I'll talk to all the existing known users, known users I know of and see if they're happy. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you still need to do the API changes for them. What? Because all the duplicated works by just using the public API where possible. And I like to make it. It's a good way to test the public API. If you, if you can use it to deduplicate it, then you know it's probably fairly complete and can read and write everything. Um, does the does the duplicate need to change? No, not really. Um, all the types are more or less similar to types of uh, to all the new type kinds are more or less similar to the kinds of type kinds we're already using. Some existing BTF clients might find it a little interesting to adapt, though, um, because one of the ways we bring cycles is if you've got a cycle of a cycle of structures referring to the structures that refer back to the originals uh, by the name point you're at some step, some stage, obviously. And that appears in several translation units, they're different. Um, we will break the cycle by turning one of those structures into a forward. Uh, we might have, uh, if there are other conflicting types, it's similar to uh, moving things into children. And the forward acts as an indication of, hey, uh, this is a conflicting type, look at the two children to find the things it's forward to. There may be more than one of them. Uh, it's up to you which one you pick, depending on which child you're, you're, uh, you're interested in, which model you're dealing with, that sort of thing. We may want a different kind of not to abuse force this because you can also have things like force to arrays. See, of course, the now is an indication that this array is conflicting and there are different arrays in two different children. We may want a different type kind, they may just want us to throw away all the conflicting types. Yeah, I'll do whatever's easiest for the kernel people here, but I think in the end you shouldn't be dealing with conflicting types for me because they are real. In user space, we have to, and you can't throw stuff away. Um, they'd be hard, and can let them go through. <laughs> it's got thousands of conflicting structures. Um, we might just add flat to get into dark conflicting types. Um, my brother, the main PC talk, has a bunch of a similar variants until they get me into the one they're happy with, um, which is more or less exactly what's um, BTA is doing now. But which one you draw? What? Which one you draw? <laughs> oh, yeah. Which one you draw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, like beholders. <laughs> Popularity contest, okay. So that's what people does, right? Nowadays, I think. Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. No discrimination. And all the other ones assume to have the same definition of it, even if there are types referring to the other ones. Hmm, this seems like a safe thing to pass to the very to me. Kernel side changes, because obviously the first goal of this is to have the kernel use tool the duplicators rather than them having to maintain their own in power. Um, <coughs> the, CT, the, uh, the, the Pahol approach, uh, the kernel approach is that Pahol reads dwarf from the kernel, from the VM Linux O and all the kernel modules and does, does the deduplication on all of those and then smashes them uh, uh, all together into, BD, into BDF files somewhere. The CTF approach instead is we don't need dwarf at all. You, you use Linux GCTF, and every module gets independently deduplicated when it's linked automatically, simply because whenever you link anything with CTF in it, it gets deduplicated. And after that, we pick up the modules and, uh, and we pick up, well, actually, the individual object files making up the kernel, and we generate an, archi an archive containing all of, the, all, all of these things. It's somewhat differently laid out from the BTF one because we have. We, we figured, we asked the question for any given 
any given source file in the core kernel, can it actually be linked as a module? This is something you could choose to link as a module, but you just haven't. And in that case, we pretend it is a module and we put it in a per module, in a per module dictionary. Uh, this is simply so that the people that are referring to them by name in probes or whatever, or in with probing or whatever, they need to change all their, all their scripts or what have you, simply because people reconfigured the kernel and made things modules or not modules. They're either always modules or they're never modules, depending entirely on the kernel source code. I don't know whether they want that. It's easy to change it to wait so it's not. So it's not that way. I was going to say, I don't think. But it's quite that we need to change scripts anymore. Yeah, but I, I would accept. Um, do, do you really think that people are going to change their kernel config and not rebuild the, uh, the archive? The question is, um, can people going to change their kernel config and expect their own tracing scripts? <gasps> oh, sorry, yes, I see, because yes. The, yeah, yeah. You can say in the script, oh, I want the kernel to in the X4 module. <laughs> and if you build the X4 module into the kernel, it's probably rather than I to get told there is no X4 module. Yes. There is, from your perspective, it's still there. <laughs> and that, that's, all, that's all that does. It's remarkably complicated to do, but it's. Uh, 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 it's a bit, the final link stage is a little bit slower, um, simply because we haven't even tried to parallelize the final, the final linking stage at all. Um, the final deduplication of all the modules against the core kernel is basically serial, mostly because threading the mini calls is really not interesting. Um, however, it still only takes about a minute and a half to do what you're running with the entire kernel, which is pretty acceptable. And that's the 3000 module enterprise kernel monster for something smaller, it takes about 20 seconds. We could speed it up, it hasn't been optimized much. I don't think anyone will really care. If they do care, we can speed it up. <laughs> um, I don't know whether, uh, I don't know how much of this stuff the kernel people might, will want. We could go all the way back to, the, uh, to, to what the kernel people are doing now, which is more or less, here's a, here's a bunch of individual bits of, BT, bits of BTF um, referring to a Single uh, to a single dictionary, not in an archive of any kind, which is uh, which is just everything in the core kernel and in all the modules that uh, uh, built-in modules lumped into a single lumped into a single dictionary. But we can do better if they if they don't mind changing a bit. Or we can start with the simple approach and lift the lid slowly as time goes on, and then they never have to maintain the duplicator again, which is the ultimate goal of all this. And the CTF duplicate it's a lot of te a lot of testing. And we only have one format BTF in the end. In the end, hopefully, all these CTF additions could be folded into BTF mostly by saying, this works for user space. You want to work in user space, don't you want to do that? In time, they will need it. Yeah. In, ta in time, they will need it, and they will, because that's how BTF has been evolved since the beginning. We can give them a different approach. We can give them a different approach. We can do at least have an existence proof that this works. Yeah. Uh, we're about 10,000 jigs apparently now, and it's been a long time since we've had a friend. So it's pretty bad at this. Um, there are some things it doesn't duplicate well, and nice cases do screw because it's got huge numbers of massive structures, and they only differ by a couple of members each, and so you can get, du get duplicated over and over again in some child dictionary. I have ideas for future format enhancements which might improve this by basically saying this structure here is like that structure over there, except this one member is different. But I haven't done it yet, and, no, and if it happens, I'll probably propose it to the BTF people and they can go straight into BTA and improve them as well. Well, but Ghost Pivot is a, it's, no, it's, it's something else. Yeah, it's a yeah, future yeah. It's an anomaly. Uh, it's, it's not part of this, it's something I've been using on my down to implement and just been moving again. Um, what else would be helpful? Well, I think you've got more speed, and I hope you can do that anyway. Um, um, it uses the Vivian Cash tab very heavily, and I mean, it makes hundreds of thousands of individual Vivian Cash tabs and fills them up with things. And it turns out that how many Vivian Cash tabs are well designed or really thought out, intended to be hundreds of thousands of times at once. I might do some um, optimizations there to reduce the space it consumes. But you'll notice you already use much less space than, say, Dwarf, I'm putting for a few, if anyone was at the other talk. Um, that when using 800 meg, what we want to use 2 gig is real, and um, of that, probably only half the space would be consumed by the CDA or less. If we fix the hashtag thing, linking would probably reduce its space in memory consumption by about 20 or 30 percent. Um, just by moving all the copying phone functions into there and into, into a central place rather than every hashtag we track them separately. Now, the API doesn't have enough users yet because there aren't enough users of CPA, there's five or six. Um, 
I keep on, uh, I hope I always want to know if people look at CTA, APIH, and use it in anger and tell me this is terrible, I'll come up with something better, come up with something better. Um, most recent changes have improved the handling of enums, um, so we can now ask things like, um, I've got this enumerator foo, uh, what genome does it come from, what's its value? Um, if anyone has any ideas of better API functions, I would be happy with them. But um, they would probably hold, for now, the API functions I'm thinking about are probably yes, sir. Um, most of things like the, the data section and that sort of thing. And we're trying to make it act like, you know, like the API functions or yes, that's not too hard to use. That's it, really. That, and we should much that I should emphasize the hard parts, the parts of this which are currently implemented, are these invisible, these invisible format differences, which are harder than all the others, but I wanted to make sure we were at first. Um, all the other stuff, also these could be tested independently of everything else, so we could be sure they work without breaking the format. All the other stuff I'm working on now. Uh, it's much, all much smaller, despite the fact that it's so many pages of slide. Um, I suspect doing all of these will take about as long as the first few put together. <laughs> so probably in the next couple of months we'll have something. <laughs> I got a question. Oh, probably I'm just not seeing the obvious. When you had that uh, big type thing with the two multiplications, yeah. to determine the, the final values. What about prime values? You could use prime values. No, 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 I mean, what, when the, the result that you want to achieve is a prime, how do you express this in, uh, by two factors? Okay, okay. Let me think that through. Um, yes, that is a bit of a bit. Uh, well, that's the thing. That's the how, 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 how to fix that? That hasn't really occurred to me. You don't need to add a little slack on the end. You don't need one bit of slack on the end at the very most. That's okay for the video, because we don't really care. The size, you would want to get right, you're quite right about that. Uh, maybe you need to add one extra bit. 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 Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, no, I mean, I, I wonder anyway. Uh, the larger numbers get, the, the more problems you get with the multiplications. Yeah. So, so, is it perhaps rather a concatenation that you want instead of a. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking concatenation. I thought multiplication was much simpler. We were thinking concatenation, just a bit concatenating together probably makes more sense. And then, and then you can exaggerate the size of this stupid multiplication. Right. Maybe, yeah. I'm not thinking much about multiplication, actually. <laughs> or when we've got the limits that got there. Well, in the, in the, yeah, the BTF type, you can define the total size of the of the BTF type, right? Yeah. But so the size is too small. Uh, you can define types in the CTF3, but they're bigger. And what happens if you want to convert? Yeah, but if 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 in the definition of CTF that kind big, you define a type dependent variable part, which also covers the next what header. So each each BTF type, it has a fixed part and a variable part. Yeah. So the fixed part is of a constant size. And the size is in the constant size part. Yeah. So you can actually overlap the next. Oh, well, that's what this is doing. The second, the second one is this is one type ID. It's not two type IDs. They are physically concatenated together. That second BTF type is in the VLAN of the first BTF type. It's ah, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. This is a single part with one ID. Which is totally crazy, but I think if we can do the concatenation of the size, two sizes of videos, it will work. You're right, multiplication doesn't work, but it could be about um, higher values. <laughs> Hitting it much simpler, you can just ignore the size of the video. Uh, it's just one bit, this is this is big. Um, the more I look at these kind of more useful ways you're going to be On one of the slides where you were showing the 
I don't know the, whether it was invisible, but the difference where you showed that the CTF type IDs, there is a difference in the way CTF designates the type IDs in parent and child versus BTF has a split BTF model. Yes. So if we compare, so the first one says CTF type IDs in the children have a hybrid on and BTF has split type ID model. Um, so I think first model is better. In, and why? Because if you are if you are in a model where you're building an application and only one file changes, we will run into the case that, you know, smash out the whole thing, write out the BTF section again. But in the first case, you don't necessarily have to do that because all you're doing is just writing the type. Is that true or is this? Well, this is not in situations in which you really have file Yes. More than we see in our and some of Yes. I know of one program that we practice the MVP. Most um, of the, the key thing is the whole market is normally built at once by the duplicator, whenever you're not ready. Um, it is, I, I personally prefer to have part of the approach. It doesn't deal with the type of it, where it does with strings. But it's, it's not what BTF does, and I think Chain have tried to do both of them, and it's immediately difficult to implement. The one case where, where this does cause problems, if you read in a CTF, it's really trained, actually which obviously has the hybrid end end on. What do you do if you try to write that straight out the uh, CTF before? The type of solution as well, and I'm just refusing. No, you can't do that if you want to, uh, to upgrade your CTF before. Relink it, full CTF is easy. Mm -hmm. And then generate it, it reassign the type of as part of the relinking project. I, I don't much like the run continuous things, but it doesn't actually, do, it actually cause any real harm. I mean, D-Trace does add types sometimes, to dictionary, if it thinks it needs to. But it so happens that the type of dictionary you have to add are always the children, which are fun because, they, uh, um, because you're not colliding. There is one piece of fragility. No, in the second case, you will collide, right? Uh, if the, the child, so. If you're adding the child, that's fine, yeah. sure. The, the fragility in BTA in this area is that the split BTA has no indication of what the parent is, of what the parent is. And you can't actually tell if you connected that full role of parent, in which case the types of it will overlap. Or, yeah. or well, all the types of the child, because they're not actually indexing them, are going to be assigned to the wrong IDs. And all the street offsets will be wrong, and all the hell is going to break loose. So what I've added in the CDF before, and I might be able to give this to add to the BDF as well, is a name for both the parent and child, so you can tell. Um, just by looking at it, where the parent is, which opens the possibility of multi level. Hierarchies, which you can't do in CDF. You can have three level hierarchies, just keep them on But also, an indication of how many types are on the parent, how long the string thing is. So, uh, what, uh, it checks if those match uh, 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 when you connect the parent and child again with open button. And if they don't match, you fail it, uh, which seems reasonable because the results you get would be massively corrupted. I think we need to do with those in BTF as well. Uh, just assuming they were painted in the same way, the only reason this works is because they're looking for the kill. Uh, is this is this year the night of life, and certainly if it's got in the new space. Um, but when you do go to CTF v4, which one do we pick? Is it the split BTF type ID model, or is it the. Completely BTF, okay. And why is there a reason to support multi, multiple hierarchy? We just need parent child. That's a one level should work. The multiple hierarchy being the math thing is a possible way in the future in the open seats. This is, for when you're linking modules in the kernel, then you're really building a kernel archive. Instead of being parents, the parent is everything shared, and the child will all these conflicting types in different, in, with one dictionary per translation. The parent, the kernel, the parent is everything shared. The children are is this this kernel model. The problem is, the problem there is that a kernel model could contain different types of children, even though it's simple different translation units that use the same name types for different person. And at the moment, we've got no way to represent that. I mean, this is where we use the hidden bit. We shove them all in the same into the same dictionary and turn the hidden bit on for the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have a three-level hierarchy. We could split it again and modules that had conflicting, conflicting types could put them in children with a blur translation. This would of course, that all the consumers would need to know about this change because they never see the predicted type. But it would mean there was no information at all. We had the entire type system in there at last. 
So if there is this multi-level parent-child relationship, the archive format comes implicitly. Well, yeah. Yeah. We only have, we only treat it. We couldn't do it in DTF and CTF because there's only one item to do. Yeah. But with DTF, the format doesn't change if you, if you add another, ch another child on. It just means you run continuously from whatever the parent was. And it doesn't matter if it's a parent or the parent. It, it just keeps running. Um, that, well, that, that in, in DTF, there is actually no indication that you are a child at all. Um, which is another unfortunate, unfortunate fiction. You can't even tell if the split PDF is split except from the file. Uh, with CDF, you can tell that there's a parent in the flag, which is, um, is non-zero. Um, in some, um, in one of the dictionary in CDF before, that parent then will be the only thing in the string table, in the child, because you have to have a parent in the child's string table. You can't. You've got the parent. <laughs> but quite often you find that all strings have been duplicated with the, the parent's string tables. And just, it's an, oh, there's only one thing in there. <laughs> Which is quite nice. It's a, because the strings are the largest space container in the CBA. So they're not the space for ducking through, but I'd like to think that's sort of okay. That's a written mass project. That's, you know, been duplicated with the parent. It was a major improvement. Far more than you said, the BBF didn't get something in the house. All told, this is about things like a much less obtrusive and disastrous than the people who were living in it. But the same activities are not very good. They didn't have that. But yes, thank you very much for the time for that. I'll, I'll change that for the future. <laughs> I'm not going to have an issue with the ice cream. I think I have problems with the people who go to the building with that. The format is not supposed to be there. I have a question in the back. Looking at the future, because um, I think I understand this is maybe not on the very priority, but do you think it will be a way? Because I mean, writing the type of the duplicators is difficult, and uh, because it's not a trivial thing to do, it's not obvious, and it's 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 difficult. It it's difficult. It's difficult, and uh, actually, I don't know a lot of implementations of. C type system with cycles of duplicators. Maybe the one in 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 set W in DW set. There is. Yeah, but my point is, I don't know. Is is there in GDB a type of duplicator? No. So. How, what I think maybe it will be nice for the future, maybe medium long term, is to add API to libctf to actually allow allow to other programs to the duplicate similar type graphs yeah, okay. without actually having to get into BTF or CTF. Well, it, it is, it's a, uh, the API internally can be duplicated, split out from all the, the CTF stuff, and the CTF related stuff, and just put it down to it. I mean, one of the things that happened that we didn't think you guys should do is exposed optionally the SHG1 IDs which are used to distinguish types from, types from each other in the dark or the late. Yeah. At least for those types in the public API, those types in the single type table. So if you want to, to tell the two types from the same, if they were in the public API, you could just compare to a section one of them. It's not there at the moment, the big problem is they're not SHG1 in the dark impressively. But yes, it, it would be quite easy to expose the duplicator. The question is what would other format would use it, use for it, say. At the moment, the duplicator is very tied to the MCDF public API and means and rights, things it thinks are CDF. Yeah, but I guess you are using internally some sort of uh, IR or some some sort of uh, like graph. CDF. Oh, you are using CTF itself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then a little comment. Um, the Rust people, 
they are looking at at the CTF and at the BTF. And one of the comments that they had was that uh, in Rust and NAMs are basically unions because they are very sophisticated and they are basically unions. It's not like in C, these are so simple. So they were actually thinking about, uh, they thought, okay, if there is something in a way that we can express Rust unions in, in CTF and BTF, it's actually with a union. Yeah. Yeah. Rust and NAMs, sorry, not Rust yeah. union. It occurs to me now, actually, it's the easiest way to, incur, to expose the GT predicament. If you've got a pile of types and want to read them, just use the CTF adding address to stick with the CTF dictionaries. You don't have to write them out to anything. Call cool the CTF link. You take them out going back, set them out by traversing them into a dictionary, throw the dictionary away. You don't need to write anything to this. It doesn't. It's so for the, uh, we, we've talked about this a little bit before, you, you, the, the, the rest of people I, I think are looking at adding a dwarf reader in the kernel, not, not well, beca because of the lack of a stable ABI for Rust, right? Have you thought about whether we can go to them and say, look, CTF or, or enhanced BTF would actually solve it. Uh, what, what, what type information do they need to encode? How much more is there in the machine? Exactly, exactly, yeah. We did, we did already. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we, we did already, and they are quite positive that probably BT, CTF and even BTF could actually do it with not a lot of uh, additions because because what they need to express is not the source level constructions, but the realized types. Yeah, yeah. And that makes everything way may, much easier. Okay. Yeah, so, but yeah. Well. Yeah, they, defi they definitely are. And they are. Because if they can avoid dwarfs, that would be. Really yeah, and actually, yeah. Everyone wants to avoid dwarf in the kernel because it's so massive and so on. Well, exactly the same way. But uh, I was chatting for a while recently. The only thing it looks like we need to encode is the. Uh, relationship, you know, basically the class hierarchy, mostly the a virtual basis, and nothing else. All the complicated name lookup and template stuff we can ignore. So it would only be one type kind again. Of and it would be easy, easy to add. The hard part is, of course, someone would have to add that to G++. And I suspect most So on the aspect of Rust needing these, um, Rust using CTF or BTF, but using it for realized types, I think we might end up in a problem in the compiler because the compiler does emit debug information early on. If it is for realized types, we will have to switch uh, specifically where you generate the debug information uh, or adapt it at a later point in the compiler. For both already, because fundamentally when you model all the type, it changes all the offsets, and without learning what the offsets are, you can't use the debug for the a vector of ink and a vector of a vector of long bottoms is a cost of different sizes. All the offsets have to make be encoded like somehow already. I'm not sure because but most like GCC doesn't have optimizations where you are say restructuring the struct. Once it so it's done early on, the types the type is known and the debug information is created. And that's what one of the discussions that we had yesterday, what to do with randomized struct. Uh, yeah. Yes, well I'm going to ice cream with this. Anyway, at least no one's told me this is a terrible idea and you should stop right now. So thank you. And there should be no negative impacts on anything. I don't think I'll need to change LD at all. The API stays more or less identical. Okay. Hmm? Oh, LVM is going to, well, one of the things I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to the Billy Tools licensing bot and I'm going to ask about LGBLing the CTF simply because every use case I've encountered so far involves talking to things that aren't GPLv3. In the case of Lipside, we want to be able to link it into completely arbitrary programs in order to, in order to encode their type graph and send it off and um, transform it into the Lipside type system. Um, we, I mean, very much, uh, libctf actually has two versions. There's one which links up links with libbfd and can open the whole executables magically and so on, and there's one that doesn't. And we don't need to be doing this for the one that doesn't because bfd is GPL. Um, Sorry, uh, elaborate on that because I was only aware of one. There are two shared libraries, libctf and libctf non-bfd. 
And oh, okay. The, the, you can you basically you can hand in a pile of sections full of data in a long form, but you can't just hand in a binary and say take the sections out. Oh, okay, okay. And that's the only difference. In practice, anybody who's, uh, um, uh, um, who's playing on this level will probably open their own health executables anyway, so I didn't think they uh, There are uses of both already. I think the Abigail is using the long BMP version for reasons that didn't entirely understand. <laughs> uh, Dragon certainly is, but it doesn't need health executables. Oh.